Hello everyone, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart. Are you ready to go shopping? I hope so, because Lesson 12 is talking about visiting the market. In this lesson, you will discover the market provides buyers with goods. So what kinds of things can you buy at the market? And how do you buy them? Let's take a look. First of all, one of the things we can buy at the market, one of the things that is very good for your health, is vegetable. And of course, we usually talk about vegetables, right? Because there are many vegetables that are good for us. A vegetable is a plant that people can eat as food. So basically, any plant that you can eat as food, we call that as a vegetable. Of course, there is a distinction made from fruits, right? Fruits and vegetables are a little bit different, but usually our definition here, a vegetable is a plant that people can eat as food. Okay, our next word is a verb, to provide. This is what markets do for people. They provide things. Provide means to give someone something. And as we can see, it is a verb, to give. To give someone something is to provide them with something. So if you provide somebody with something, you are giving them uh, the, the thing or you're giving them the chance to buy your thing, okay? Markets provide many goods for sale. So markets give uh, many products for sale to customers. Our next word is pick out. When you go to the market, wow, there are so many fruits and vegetables, so many different types of food that you need to choose which one you want. You can't get them all, right? Your, your stomach's not big enough, right? So you want to pick out the ones that you want. Pick out means to choose one from many things. Especially sometimes you go to a supermarket and you see, wow, there are so many apples and even so many different kind of apples, right? There's green ones, there's red ones, there's big ones, there's small ones. Which one do you get, right? There's sweet ones, there's sour ones. You have to choose which one you want. And even in the, in the bin, if you say, I want a green one, you have to choose which green one you want. So you pick out your groceries. You pick out the th goods that you want to buy from among many choices. So you want to pick them out. Okay, we also have way. When you buy, especially when you buy vegetables or fruit or some type of food that's not packaged, right? It just comes in a, uh, there's a lot of them and you pick out several of them. You have to weigh them because the store needs to know how much to charge you for those goods. How do you know? If there's five apples, you have five big apples, maybe five smaller apples are cheaper, right? Of course, the more you buy, the heavier the item you buy, the more it costs. So you need to weigh it. Weigh means to put something on a scale to see how heavy, how heavy it is. And this is a type of scale. Of course, the scale that you see at the grocery store is not this type of scale. You put it on and there's a little electronic, right? A digital readout, it tells you how much something is. Or sometimes the clerk pushes a button and a little paper comes out and that's the price of the goods that you want to buy. That is the price of the cucumbers or the tomatoes or the apples that you want to buy. So you need to weigh them first before you go to pay for those goods. Okay, also milk. Milk is another thing that you can buy at the supermarket or grocery. Milk, of course, is a white drink. It's white in color that we can get from cows, right? Goats and sheep. Did you know that? Of course, normally we drink cow's milk, but you can drink goat milk and sheep milk. Did you ever have goat milk or sheep milk? I never drank that. I've always drunk cow milk. That's the most common type of milk. But in some places where there aren't many cows, you can get milk from goats and you can get milk from sheep and human beings can drink that also. But normally we get milk from cows. Okay, a buyer. 
What is a buyer? That's you, right? Or that's your mom or dad, right? When you go to the sh uh, grocery store, if you go with your mom, she is the buyer. If you go by yourself and you buy something, you are the buyer. So a buyer is someone who buys something. And she, this woman here is a buyer. She has bought many things, right? She is a very busy buyer, right? Okay, so when you go to the store and you buy something, you can call yourself a buyer. We can also call that person, of course, a customer. A customer is someone who goes into a store and buys a good. So buyer or customer. Okay, let's take a look at our chart here. How goods come to home? How do these goods come to your home? Well, of course we have the goods here, right? These are many products, different types of products that we can buy. Oh, of course, it doesn't matter if they're food, toys, whatever. They are goods. Then they are sold in the market. You go to the market to buy those things. Some markets are very big. Sometimes you have small neighborhood uh, super, supermarket, right? A very small market. But markets are many different sizes and shapes and types. But you go to the market to get the goods. At the market, you meet the seller. The seller is the person who works at the market. You are the buyer. You're the one. You're the one who buys the product. So you are the customer, right? The seller gives goods to the buyer and the buyer in exchange gives money to the seller. So in exchange. You're not really just uh, exchange. The seller isn't just giving you the goods. You're giving that person something in exchange as a trade, right? They give you the goods, you give them the money. That's in exchange, okay? So goods, uh, the buyer gets the goods and the buyer gives the money to the seller. Then after the buyer has taken the goods, given the money, then the buyer goes home and then everybody in the family enjoys the goods, okay? And that's how goods come to your home. Let's take a look at our uh, word matching exercise. We need to match the words to the proper definitions. Let's take a look. Our words are vegetable, vegetable, provide, provide, pick out, pick out, weigh, that's easy, right? Weigh, milk, milk, and buyer, buyer. Those are our words. How do we match them to the definitions? Let's start with number one. Someone who buys something. That's easy, right? Someone who buys something. If you buy something, they're the person who does it. We just add ER to the verb, right? Buy is the verb. We add ER and we have our word. Buyer over here. This is a pattern that is very common in English, by the way. For example, if you wait, right, wait is a verb. But if your job is to wait on people at a restaurant, you are called a waiter, right? If you drive a vehicle, drive is our verb. But if you drive a vehicle for a job, right, like a bus, you are a driver, right? So we see that verb and then we add ER or sometimes just R and that makes a person who does that thing. So a person who buys something is a buyer. Very simple and very common pattern we can see in English. Number two, a plant. So we're looking for a plant that people can eat as food. We can eat it as food. Where is our plant that we can eat as food? Ah, it's over here, isn't it? That's the vegetable. Vegetable is a plant that we can eat as food. And of course, you should always eat vegetables every day for a healthy body because vegetables are very healthy for us. Okay, number three. To put something on a scale, on a scale to see how heavy it is. We want to know how heavy are these apples? How heavy is this watermelon, right? Watermelons are very heavy. We need to know how heavy it is, so we put it on a scale. What are we doing when we do that? We are weighing. So to weigh means to put something on a scale because we want to know. Our question is, how 
heavy is it? Number four, to choose one from many things. So you want to choose one. You have many things in front of you. You want to choose one of those things. You pick out, right? You pick something out. So when you choose from many things, you are picking out one thing from many choices, from many options. So you pick it out. Five, to give someone something. If you give someone something, especially if you give someone the choice or you give someone the opportunity to do something, what are you doing? You are providing. You provide. So a market provides many goods to its customers, right? They provide, they give those customers many choices, many options to pick something out. They provide many goods to customers. Six, a white drink that we can get from cows, goats, and sheep. And this white drink is very good for us. It helps build strong bones and teeth, right? So what is this uh, product? What is this thing? It is, of course, milk. And you should drink milk every day also because that's very important for us, growing strong and healthy body. It helps build your bones stronger. It also helps have you, uh, it also helps let you have healthy, white, and strong teeth, which is very important, obviously. Okay, let's take a look at our chart here. Now, when you go to the supermarket and you buy something, there are many ways that you can pay for these goods, right? You're getting the product. In exchange, you're giving the seller money. So how do you give money to the seller? There's four different ways we can see on this chart. One way is you can have coins, right? If you have a lot of coins, you can give all the coins to the seller, right? Of course, the seller may not like that because they have to count all the coins, but usually you can use bills and coins together. So you have paper money and you can give coins for uh, the rest, the change, right? So if something is, you know, Ichan Obegwan, right? You give Ichan Wan as paper money and Obegwan as a coin, right? Or if you go to an American supermarket and something is $2.25, you give $2 in paper money and 25 cents as a quarter, you give that as coin. So we have coins and bills. That's really uh, the most common type of money that we use. But we can also, and this is very common in America especially, not so common in Korea, but very common in America is you can write a check. Write a check. Now what this means is that you have a bank account. You have a bank account and you open it up and it's called a checking account. And the bank gives you a little book with all these checks on it. And when you go to the supermarket, you can write the name of the supermarket. Happy Supermarket, right? If the name is Happy Supermarket, you write that there. Then you write how much in numbers, one or two, and then up you write 225. So you write up here 225, just like that. And underneath on the bottom, you write the whole thing out. You have to write like this, two dollars and 25, I usually do this, 100, so that means 25 cents. And then you go like this so that nobody can add more money at the end, right? That's not good. So you put $2.25, you write it out, and then you sign your name. Sign your name at the bottom, right? So you sign your name like this, that's signing my name, right? At the bottom of the check, I give that to the supermarket seller, and they accept that as money, especially if it's a local bank. Let's take a look here. This is somebody who's doing exactly what I just said. As you can see, they've already filled out their check. They have paid to the order of, that's the name of the person that they're um, giving the check to. They wrote the number. It's a little bit hard to see. Uh-oh, they're rejecting it. Why did they reject that? Check, that's terrible. Okay, we'll get to that. But as you can see, they wrote uh, the numbers out up here. Then they wrote the same number in longhand, 1,340, I believe it's $9. And I can't see the cents because it's a little blurry. But they have to write it out here. Then they say, sometimes you can say, what is it for? Here they said for service. And then they sign their name here. Now you saw that stamp come down and said reject. 
I don't know what that's about. That means that they're not going to accept the check. They're going to reject it. Hopefully they don't do that. If they reject it, that means they refuse that check. That check cannot be used. But in most cases, stores will accept the check. Okay, I hope that's the case. Okay, but anyway, that's a very common system in America that people use. And they have a book of checks and you can use them as money. One thing that might happen though, is if they write a check for too much money, they don't have that much money in the bank account, then it can be rejected and the check will bounce. And that's very bad because you have to pay off penalty. Okay, but that's a very complicated thing. Anyway, the thing is that in, in America, checks are actually quite common uh, as a form of money. Finally, we have credit card. Now, you probably are familiar with credit card. Credit cards are becoming more and more common. Sometimes people at the store will say, how will you pay? Cash or credit? Cash or credit? And that means... Will you pay with cash, bills, or coins, or will you pay by credit? And that, of course, means by credit card. And credit cards are very dangerous because be careful using credit cards. You can spend too much money and forget. If you have coins and bills, you know exactly how much money you have. So be careful with credit cards. But these are four different ways that people can spend money or use money to buy goods or services. Okay, let's come to this uh, mini quiz here. We have complete the sentence to best describe the pictures. We have two pictures here. This picture here is in a pharmacy. A pharmacy, this is where you go to get drugs that will help you, like medicines, aspirin, uh, things if you have a, a, a stomach ache, you know, oh, my stomach hurts. So you go to the pharmacy and you can get medicine and it will make you feel better. So this is at a pharmacy. This is a pharmacist. This is the buyer or customer. She is buying goods. Over here, this is a clothing store. Here we have the seller. We have the buyer. She is also buying her goods, right? So sellers, beep buyers with goods. So whether it's medicine or clothes, sellers are doing what? They're giving. They are providing. Sellers provide buyers with goods. Basically what sellers are doing, they're giving the customers the opportunity or the chance to buy these goods. So they're providing many goods for the sellers. The sellers can go to the store and buy those goods. So they're providing the sellers with many goods. And we go there and pick out which one we want. Okay, we've come to our true-false questions. Let's take a look. We can buy fruit and vegetables at a market. Is that true? We can buy fruit and vegetables at a market? Of course, that is true, absolutely. We go to a market to buy many types of goods. Usually a market is a food market, right? And usually supermarkets are food markets, but we can just say market too. The most common type of market is a food market, where we go to buy our groceries, the food that we need for every week. And of course, fruits and vegetables are very important parts of our groceries. So if we wanna buy fruit, we want to buy vegetables, we can go there. By the way, sometimes fruit is used as a non-count noun. We can buy fruit, or sometimes you can say fruits as plural. It depends on how you use it, but this is fine. We can buy fruit and vegetables at a market. Number two, pick out. To pick out means to choose one from many things. So this sentence says that pick out is a verb. It means to choose. Is that true? If you have many things and you have to make a choice, is it true that you pick out? Is that what it means? Absolutely, that is what it means. So that number two is a true sentence. It's exactly true. Pick out means to choose one thing from many others. Number three, people who work at the market. People who work where? At the market are buyers. So people who are working at the market, right? They are accepting money and they are giving goods to buyers. They are buyers, right? No, they're not. You, that sounds a little weird. Buyers give goods to buyers, right? People who work at the market are not buyers. That's false. We have to change this word. 
how can we change that word with a word that we learned uh, already, that we talked about. People who work at the market are not buyers, they are sellers, right? And even though that word was not part of our vocabulary, we looked at that on our chart. And it follows the same pattern I showed to you before. Sell is a verb. A person who does that verb is a seller. Just like buy is a verb, and a person who does that verb is a buyer. So people who work at the market are not buyers, they are sellers. So number three is false. Okay, well that wraps it up for our vocabulary section. Let's take a short break. We'll come back and look at the reading section. Don't go away. Welcome back. Let's go over the reading section together. Of course, we're talking about visiting the market and that is what the reading section is about. Our first sentence is, the market provides buyers with goods. We have two of our vocabulary words right away. Provides buyers with goods. So, if a buyer wants to get goods, where do they go? They go to the market because the market provides buyers with goods. The market gives goods to the buyers. It gives the buyers opportunities or chances to pick out the goods they want. You're at the market with your mom now. <gasps> you are? Oh, I thought you were studying with me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're just imagining, right? Okay, so you're at the market with your mom now. Imagine, right? Don't go there. Don't run away. Go get mom. Let's go to the market. No, don't do that, right? Let's just imagine, okay? So you're at the market with your mom now. There are many different vegetables, fruits, and cereals you can find. So vegetable was our uh, vocabulary word. But remember, vegetables is one type of plant you can eat. Fruit is another type of plant you can eat. And we also have another thing here, cereals. Of course you know what cereals are. Cereals are crunchy, like the baked, uh, uh, not like biscuits or anything, but they're made from wheat or they're made from rice and they're baked and they taste good, right? You pour them in a bowl, put milk over them and eat them. Very common breakfast food. So, vegetables, fruits, and cereals, you can find many types of these things. There are many different types of these things at the market that you can find. You can also find juice and milk, right? So you have your food, you also have your drink, right? Uh, of course, if you just eat cereal by itself, you have milk there, but maybe you want some orange juice with that, right? So, of course, you have to put milk into your cereal, too. These are healthy foods, healthy foods, and we eat them every day. Absolutely. Most American kids, they'll eat cereal for breakfast every day. They'll put milk in the cereal, they might have orange juice with it, and hopefully they have a fruit with their breakfast. At lunch, they will, mom will pack a lunch for them. Mom usually packs a vegetable, like a carrot or something like that, and maybe a fruit, like an apple or an orange, into the sack lunch, into the lunch that the children carry to school. So it's very important to eat these things every day because they are healthy foods. They're good for you. These are healthy foods. We can eat them every day. So let's eat them every day. Okay, your mom looks at her shopping list and picks out some fruit and vegetables. Before your mom goes to the store, she makes a list, right? She makes a shopping list. What does she need? So when she goes to the store, there's so many things. She doesn't have to spend much time thinking, oh, what do we need? She knows what she needs because she looks at the list and she can do her shopping very quickly. Okay, she picks out some fruit and vegetables. And here she is, she's picking out some fruit. Looks like she's picking up or picking out some apples. She chooses the best goods after thinking and comparing. So if on her list it says get apples, we need six apples, she will look at the different types of fruit of apples, she'll think about it, she'll think about which one is cheaper, which one is better quality, which one is better taste, and then she'll pick out the ones that she wants and that's how she chooses the goods for the family. Then the worker, the worker is talking about the person at the supermarket. The worker weighs the goods and tells her the price. So 
Mom will give those apples to a worker, somebody who's working there. And you can see them. If you go to a big supermarket, you can see the people working there. They usually have the uniform or an apron for the、uh, store on, and they're standing next to the scale, the weighing machine. And so mom will give them the goods. The worker will put them on the scale and say what the price is. Tells her the price. So your mom walks towards the counter. Now she will go home and cook after paying. So the counter, we also call this counter in the supermarket the checkout counter. Checkout counter. And that, of course, is where she takes all of her goods, she puts them on the counter, and another worker. Behind the counter, takes those goods and uses a machine to add up the prices of all the goods. Then mom pays that person with some type of money, bills, coins, check, credit card, and then she goes home and cooks after she pays, after paying. Okay, so that is the story of how mom goes to the supermarket and gets the goods, brings them back home. Let's take a look now at our reading skill. And we're looking at sequence because basically this is like a story, right? You're imagining you're at the supermarket now with your mom. What are the steps that mom does in order、uh, to get those goods and then to be ready to go back home and cook for the family? We have three steps first step, second step, third step. There are blanks in each step. These are the words we use to fill in the blanks. The words are price, pays, picks out, and weighs. Remember, picks out is like one blank, right? They're together. Okay, so what's the first step? Your mom does what with some fruit and vegetables, right? Your mom will. When she goes to the supermarket, there are many types of fruits and vegetables, or many types of fruit and vegetables. So she has to choose which ones to buy. She has to choose. She has to pick out, right? Your mom picks out some fruit and vegetables. She chooses the fruit or the vegetables that she wants to buy. After she does that, you know, she puts it in a bag. Then what does she do? The worker, beep. The goods. So she gives the goods to the worker, right? And the worker puts those goods on a scale to see how heavy they are, right? We need to know how heavy they are to know how much does it cost. So when we put it on a scale to find out how heavy they are, what are we doing? We, of course, are weighing. So the worker weighs the goods, weighs the goods, and tells her what? Tells her. The price. We talked about that. I just said that. We, not, we want to know how much it costs. We want to know what is the price. So the worker will weigh the goods and tell her the price. Finally, the last step at the supermarket. Your mom does what? She does what at the counter? Remember, this is also called the checkout counter. What does mom do at the checkout counter? She has to give money, right? When she gives money, what is she doing? She is paying. So your mom pays at the counter, at the checkout counter. It's the place, you know, you get all your goods together. Finally, the last stop before you leave the store, you pay for your goods at the counter. Then, after she pays, then she will go home and she will cook, and we can enjoy a delicious meal. Sounds good, right? And that's how mom gets this, the food、uh, from the market to your home. Okay, let's go over our reading comprehension questions. Number one What does a market provide to buyers? So, in the, from the passage, we remember what does the market provide to buyers? A, B, or C? Well, A is money, B is goods, and C is checks. So, when we go to a market, Do we want the market to give us money? No, we're going to give money to the market. So A is not right, right? Do we want C? Checks is similar to money. Checks is almost the same as money, right? Do we want the market to give us checks? No, we're not at the market to get checks. We're at the market to get goods, right? So the answer is B. What does a market provide to buyers? It's goods. Okay, number two. You can use money or a beep. 
to pay for goods. Remember what I told you? The very common question that a worker at the checkout counter will ask you is cash or credit. So will you pay by cash, which is money, or will you pay with credit? And when you pay by credit, how do you pay with credit? Do you, uh, do you give them a piece of fruit? <laughs> That's credit. Here's a piece of fruit. Would you like a banana? <laughs> That's crazy, right? <laughs> That's very silly. Okay, B, white drink. Oh, here's a white drink. That's also very silly. How about this one? Credit card. Sure, you can use money or a credit card to pay for goods because you're going to pay with cash, money, or credit card to pay with credit. So you use a credit card as credit, and that's what you're using. So you either have the actual bills and coins, which is money, right? Uh, that's cash or you have a piece of plastic that is your credit card. And a third option we talked about, of course, is check. So sometimes you can use a check, and this is kind of common in America, although, uh, you know, it's, it's becoming maybe a little bit less common. Most people will use cash uh, or credit card. In fact, more and more people are using credit cards instead of cash. So I think credit cards are probably most popular, cash is next popular, and checks are sometimes accepted, but sometimes they're not accepted. Especially credit uh, checks are not accepted if I'm from Florida, one state, and I go to California and I say, can I use a check? Usually they say no, because the check on my bank is in Florida. It's too far away. So I either have to use cash or credit card. These are the two most common types. Checks you can use if it's local in your neighborhood. The bank is in your neighborhood and the supermarket is in your neighborhood. Then that you can use a check. Okay, but anyway, that's a long explanation for this one. Basically, you can use money or a credit card to pay for goods. Okay, you can also use check in certain circumstances. Okay, number three. After you choose fruit and vegetables, after you chose the fruit and vegetables, what can you do? A, B, or C. Let's take a look. A, you can find the price by having them weighed. So in the supermarket, you've uh, chosen, you've picked out your fruit and vegetables, you can find the price by giving them to the worker, the worker will weigh them. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. Absolutely. That's what we do. Let's go over B and C for practice. B, you can provide the buyer with money. That doesn't make sense because you are the buyer. You don't provide yourself with money. That would be silly. Doesn't make sense. C, you can take them home without paying. Don't do that, right? <laughs> the police will come and take you to jail, okay? Do not take the fruit and vegetables home without paying. That's stealing, right? If you do that, that is called stealing. Stealing, okay? So absolutely do not do that, <laughs> okay? The answer is A. You can find the price by having them weighed. Okay, four. At a market, your mom will pick out something. She will pick out A the best goods after thinking and comparing, B, fruit and vegetables that weigh the most, C, goods that she will sell to the seller at the counter. Two of those sound silly. One of them is correct. Of course, it's A that's correct. At a market, your mom will pick out the best goods after thinking and comparing. So even though mom has a list, right? She says the list might say apples. But there are many kinds of apples. She has to think about which apples to buy. She wants to compare the prices, the shape, the size, uh, the quality, if they look fresh, if they look old, right? She has to do all that and she has to pick out the best ones. Okay, let's take a look at B for practice. Your mom will pick out the fruit and vegetables that weigh the most. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. Why does she want to get the heaviest ones, right? Uh, it doesn't mean that they're the best ones. It just means that they're the heaviest ones. Well, sometimes you don't want the heaviest ones. Maybe you want smaller ones. So that doesn't make sense. C, goods that she will sell to the seller at the counter? That doesn't make any sense, right? She's not going to pick up the goods and go sell them at the counter. They're not hers, right? She can't sell them. They're the markets. So that, of course, is not logical. It doesn't make sense. And we saw that A is the best answer there. Okay, let's come back to our chart here. How goods come to home. And then we were talking in the reading, uh, reading passage, how goods get 
to your home. And we saw the little uh, sequence, the steps in which they come to your home. But first of all, what do we have? If we go to the market, what do we find? We find many types of food, fruits, vegetables, different types of drinks. What are all these things? These are all things, objects that we can buy with money. We call these goods, right? These are goods. These goods are located in the mar in, in where? In the market, right? They are located in the market. The market is the place where two types of people come together. We have the seller and the buyer. These are two types of people. They meet at the market. Why? Because the seller is going to provide goods to the buyer and the buyer is going to give money to the seller in exchange for the goods. And that's, of course, is the way the economy works. So, after the buyer has uh, bought the goods from the seller, she brings them where? She brings them home so the whole family can enjoy a delicious meal together. And of course, a healthy meal. Obviously, they have many uh, vegetables and some fruits here as well. So this is going to be a healthy meal that they are going to enjoy together. Okay, so our unit was 12, visiting the market. We've talked about some, a, little, a few things that we can find at the market, usually food, drinks, you know, food like cereals, fruit, vegetables, drinks like milk, orange juice, uh, stuff like that. Uh, these are things that are healthy for us. We should eat them every day. How do we get them? Well, the buyer, the person who buys something is a buyer, goes to the market. The person who sells something is the seller, right? They're providing the goods to the buyer. The buyer is giving money in exchange. There's four uh, common ways to use money, coins, bills, checks, and credit card. Of course, nowadays it's usually credit card. Cash is also very common. Checks are not so common. And remember that they are in America and they are used in America much more often in Korea. I've hardly ever seen a check, somebody writing a check in Korea. I've never seen that. I've seen the pre uh, made checks, the check that's uh, like a supyo for shipman one. I've seen those, but that's not the same as a check in America. So there are four main types of money that we use in America to pay for our goods. But anyway, that wraps up the process of how goods come to home and what you can find at a market and how you can buy healthy food for you and your family. That wraps it up for today. Are you hungry? I'm getting hungry talking about all this food, so go enjoy a healthy snack, okay? I'll see you guys next time. Take care.